I'm talking about love is blind again. Hello everyone, it's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. If you're not new around here, what is up home skillet biscuit? Happy Saturday. If you're new to the channel, I don't usually talk about reality shows. I do a thing called Bad Movies in a Beat, the series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. But if you are not new to the channel, you know I am love is blind trash. And for the last two seasons, I've been updating you guys along the way because it's a masterpiece. They're currently on season four. Uh, a few weeks ago, I did the first five episodes of this season because that's all that was out at the time of filming. So if you haven't seen that video, I would watch it first. So you're not gonna know what's going on. Also, if you know nothing about Love is Blind, I would start there. But this week we're talking about episodes six through 11. Again, as of filming, those are the episodes that are out. Um, by the time you see this video, they will have done the actual weddings. So don't watch this video and be like, well, why didn't you talk about how so-and-so said yes and so-and-so said no, I don't know right now. It's a Tuesday and I'm also gonna be drinking. So this is gonna be a very out of pocket video, which is only appropriate because what is going on? What is going on? Possibly alluding to too much before we get into the video. Uh, before we get too into it, let's send it over to Admiral Kenny who keeps this in a bag. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Admiral Kenny and today's video is sponsored by ThreadUp. ThreadUp is an online thrift store that allows you to shop secondhand without dealing with anything that is awful about thrift shopping. As a plus size tall woman, personally, I don't find the scouring through bins thing all that fun. Honestly, it's incredibly frustrating because you spend all that time to just find something that fits at all. And then when you find it, it's like, this is ugly. I don't want this. I don't even want a second hand. But ThreadUp allows you to filter by size, item, etc., so that you can get to the best part of thrifting, which is buying something for a fraction of the price and that would have otherwise just gone into a landfill or something. Speaking of which, ThreadUp for Earth Month is celebrating the ways in which the company uh, helps the earth. Fun fact, every time I wear something secondhand, I save enough water to make 74 matcha lattes. 74. So really quickly, let's talk about the things that I got. First off, I got this yellow dress from Ashley Stewart. I got it knowing it's going to be too big, but I love the color and the neck detail. So I was thinking either A, I could see how it would look oversized or B, I can like turn it into a top, like a crop top, or I can get it taken in. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with it, but I just love the color, particularly bright yellow like this in spring on my skin tone, especially when I have a tan. Oh, it's gonna be luscious. So I need to figure out what I wanna do with this. Maybe I could just put a belt on it in a particular way. I don't know, I'm trying to figure it out. I got this luscious, luscious skin chocolate color body con. Body con! <laughs> this dress is everything. This is from Naked Wardrobe. This dress is so soft and simple, but just looks so good. Good. I got it for $23.99, so a little over half off, that's great. Um, This next dress, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out how to put on correctly at first, and it took a very long time, and I was like, this better be worth it. And it is, again, body. This is originally from Shein, and I personally don't shop directly from Shein anymore, but getting it secondhand, like again, it would have just been thrown in a dump somewhere. So I still get to have it, and I look so hot. I'm sorry, somebody give me a reason to wear this dress. Somebody take me out. I have nowhere to, I'm just gonna be walking around my house like I am so sexy, but inside, why? Then of course it's spring, so I got a romper. Uh, this was originally from Fashion to Figure. The problem with me and rompers is that I, I'm tall, so I end up sizing up in order to get it to fit my torso. So there ends up being like a bit more fabric in the fupa area a lot of times. But honestly, I don't care that much because it's just food baby space in my in my opinion. And last but not least, I got some shorts from Under Armour. Always associated Under Armour shorts with having like a really big juicy a volleyball booty. I will say that I should have sized up on these because the fatty is a little squished, but nothing too distracting. I will definitely be wearing these around the house. Also, they were $18.99, which is a little less than half off from the original price, which is somewhere around 30. So I'm not losing my mind about it. So if you would like to check out ThreadUp and get an extra 40% off of your order, you can use code Kenny and click on the link down below. Big thanks again to ThreadUp for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery. <laughs> this is very off topic, but I've had uh, Mr. Gigi's ad roll stuck in my head for days. Kind of want to start singing it, but I got a job to do, damn it. I got them old job red. Doom, 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 yeah. And baby, I got rose. Air. 
do, 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 yeah. Got a date night in this new box. Soda drink you order on a rooftop. Always at my doorstep waiting for me. It might as well be holding up a boom box. Okay, I'm sorry. You ain't gotta write love notes. I got pomegranate ones. It's picture perfect, but I know you love the candy ones. I'm sorry. Get to curating. Everyone you pick, give it your rating. So you can get every delivery better and better and better and better and better. Corks popping together. At resorts, good weather, but all of rain. Doom, 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 yeah. Shout out to Mike for making bangers. Um, but yes. That song is the song of the week that my ADHD is playing as I try to film. So if you're ever wondering what the seal is playing inside, that is it. If you hear little feet, it's my dog. Hello, Russet. She's coming in. What do you have? What do you have in your mouth? What is this? Did you break something? What? So since the last time we've been here, things have been popping off on the internet. People have been trying to tag me in everything because apparently there's been spoilers and there's been people fighting and stuff. I have not been engaging in any way at any of that information because I didn't want any spoilers. So for those of you that know what the T is, keep that because I'm a re-engage with it. But after we've had the season over, they're gonna do the reunion, which apparently is gonna be live messy. So I'll wait until all of that is addressed in that area before I even look to see what any of that is. Cause apparently it's been getting really messy on the internet. With that said, if you expect me to bring it up in this video, I don't know it because I didn't want any spoilers. So apparently cast members have been popping off. Uh, people was leaking stuff last year about this season. I'm like, how you still have a job? Are you done being dramatic? This is why I don't usually film with her home. Cause she wants all the attention. Are you giving it to me? Cause you want me to throw it? So last time we were here, uh, Kwame was lying to himself and Chelsea about how he wanted to be with her even though he was still in love with Micah. Irina and Zach were breaking up and she started flirting with Paul, her best friend or her friend during filming, her fiance. Jacqueline was starting on her self-sabotage foolishness. Zach was eating crow and crawling back to bliss and Tiffany and Brett were being sexy and in love. Good. So let's get on with episode six. The couples are now returning from Mexico and settling into Seattle where they're going to get their first taste of real life, which isn't really real life. It's them sharing a townhouse that the production team paid for, but closer to real life, they're living together. And then eventually they're gonna visit each of their respective real homes to see how the other person is living. This will be their first taste of like organizing working arrangements, cleanliness style, chores, distribution, all of those like logistics of living with a partner. You know, that kind of everyday minutia that can get people butting heads. And while they're doing that, Zach and Bliss are meeting for the first time. If you recall, Zach had proposed to Irina. Irina saw him in person and did not like him at all. And then now they have broken up and Zach is like, maybe I should have picked the other girl that I was interested in, Bliss, and now they're meeting for the first time. So I will say that whenever I see Zach now, I think of him as like the extra property brother because somebody said that's what he looks like and I can't unsee it now. But yeah, they're talking about, you know, the elephant in the room. Um, he's not engaged to the woman that he proposed to. And he's like, Bliss, I made the wrong decision. You know I made the wrong decision. I know I made the wrong decision. It was a bad decision that I made. He's like, she treated me awfully. Our honeymoon was terrible. And I was just sitting there like, Bliss was really the girl that I was looking for. And I'm like, oh good. And Bliss kind of takes in this information. She's kind of reserved and cautious around him because A, this is the first time they're meeting face to face. They didn't even know what each other looked like before this. And then B, he had just proposed to somebody else. And also that Irina is that person that Bliss explicitly said she was. <laughs> and you still propose to her, like she has a lot of reservations, you know, talking to him. You were the girl that I was looking for. That's like so annoying though. It's up to no, say. That's like very I know, annoying to I, hear that. I know, I'm just telling you the truth. I knew like when I told you no, like as I walked out the door that I up. I got what I deserved for sure. But the entire date is very uncomfortable and awkward. And at first I thought that was indicative of Bliss being uninterested in having any further interactions with him. But spoiler, apparently that's not the case. They're just two incredibly awkward yet similar people. So, but again, at least while leaving this date, Bliss seems incredibly reserved. Zach obviously wants to start things back up, even though he says like, I'm not here to like start things back up. And I'm like, 
Shut up. Speaking of elephants in the room, Micah discusses with Paul that apparently off camera, Irina had come up to Micah and told her she's attracted to Paul. Like as they were flying back from Mexico. Weird. And Paul is like, you know, now that you mention it, she was very touchy, but I didn't think anything of it because A, Zach was right there. So I wouldn't think that she would make an actual move on me with Zach right there. And then also I feel so secure in our relationship that I, but I, I, it, I just didn't register it. Also, she's your friend, I would imagine is a part of it. He's just like, I didn't think anything of it. I believe him. To me, his response doesn't come off disingenuous, but I've, I've said it last time that I don't get a great reading on Paul. It's, I still don't. He's kind of this just dry mechanical robot person. <laughs> so I haven't noted him being particularly disingenuous up until this point. So like, we don't see a lot of evidence of him lying. So, so she kind of takes that for what it is. And she says, okay, well, I've addressed things with you. So obviously this is something I'm gonna have to address with her specifically. And I'm gonna talk to her about it. This is also the episode where people start meeting friends and family. They do this for every episode, basically leading up to the marriage, but this is when they first start. Brett meets Tiffany's friends and it's so cute. Her friends seem like really amazing people. They give a very good vibe. They remind me a lot of my friend group actually. They just seem really supportive and they're like crying. They're like, she deserves everything. She's just such a beautiful person. And I'm like, that's good energy. I like that. If you bad vibes, I know where you live. It's gonna be nook if you book. Like I've had friends threaten murder. That's when you know they're good friends. And Brett so far is amazing. So he's definitely up to par for somebody that they would like to be with Tiffany. I will say, this, uh, this annoyed me and it probably wouldn't annoy other people, but he says to her, at least for the first time on camera, I love you, but it was at this table and I didn't like that. I wouldn't complain about it. And it's obviously not that big of a deal. I love you is so important to him. It's so serious to him that I'd be like, I want that to be like just between you and me. I'd want that to be sacred, but like, again, I'm difficult, so. Irina and Micah meet up. Girl, it's a very strange scene. Like Arena is trying to defend herself, but it just kind of comes off as like, I don't know, oddly passive aggressive almost. And, like I do admit like Boo doing that, like that's so, that's so sneaky. <laughs> that's like, and then me seeing Paul and, and honestly, I was way more attracted to him than I was to Zach. Like he right. was attractive, like great. Like, honestly, like good for you, okay? I just felt the connection as like, just a, like a, like just a connection. I do admit doing that was like so sneaky. Um, And I assume she's referring to like, being flirty and touchy with Paul. I don't know if it's editing or just weird. You don't have to worry about like what I feel about Paul. Or, like, I can literally give a f I know he's not interested. <laughs> but eventually she does get to the root of the issue, which is like, like we were so close. Do I want you to be around my fiance? Like, can I trust you? Like, what, are you gonna get drunk and try to make a move and be flirty with him? Like, and Irina's like, I don't think I would do that. You know, if, if that were the case, I would just be like, Paul, sit me down, like what? And I'm like, That bitch weird. Both of y'all weird, but more so Irina, cause what are you talking about? And again, with the way the editing goes, it's like that never really gets resolved. They just start playing the horrible high intensity pop music and look at them like silently looking at each other and then they go on to the next scene. So, okay. But we never see Irina again in these next few episodes. So I guess she's a non-issue now. I don't know. Okay. Jackie and Marshall. Well, before I get started, it does start off cute. Um, he's very hospitable. He cooks breakfast for her, pancakes, make a compote, goes to the store super early in the morning so that he can give her a bust down plate before she goes off to work. And I'm kind of watching this scene. And if you recall, in my last time talking about this, I had this very, I had a very particular early reading of Jackie, which was, she's funny. She seems like super fun, cool energy at first, but I also get the vibe, just, you know, the way she presents herself and like little things that she says, that she seems to be the type of person who will self-sabotage just awfully. It was kind of things she says about like not knowing what love is, not knowing, you know, never having felt that. I just felt like this is a person that's, especially with a person like Marshall, who at this point is being very warm, action oriented. Let me show you how I feel about you. Let me, 
you know, pamper you in ways because undoubtedly she has not healed from that. I could see her just imploding and exploding and possibly, you know, taking Marshall down with her in that. But as of right now, things are great. She's like, oh my God, I've never had somebody care for me like this. This is so nice. You know, this is great. The episode ends with them building up tension around Kwame and Chelsea. Again, this is meeting friends and family episodes and Kwame will be meeting Chelsea's dad. And they're just like talking like, do you think he'll be okay with it? How has he been like accepting your partners in the past? Do you trust me that I'll do all right? Yes. Then trust me. Episode seven, it was very like built up for no reason because Chelsea's dad comes in and he seems very nice. The real goofy looking dude in a sweater. And like they build up all that stress or whatever and he's cool with it. He's like, oh, this is so nice, Chelsea. <laughs> Micah meets Paul's mom who looks a disturbing amount like her. They apparently are very similar personality wise too. And, and that ultimately goes well. I will say uh, there was one part that would have disturbed me greatly, but apparently it didn't freak her out. Basically uh, the mom is like, I'm a paralegal. So we knew your first name was Micah. And then I found all your information from that immediately, like just from your name, Micah. So, and Micah just takes that as like quirky. <laughs> I would have been, Deeply disturbed, um, but charming. Zach and Bliss keep meeting up, which was really confusing to me because again, the last time we saw them, she seemed very reserved and standoffish. So I didn't think they were gonna keep meeting up, but apparently they do. They like keep dating. Um, and again, it's so painfully awkward to watch. But again, I just kind of resigned to this realization that it's painfully awkward one because of situationally, but also because they're both just painfully awkward people. And that may be where they find home, you know? The little things that Irina found very off-putting about him, she seems to either not notice or find them cute or whatever. But Bliss does bring up the, you know, the elephant, which is that she's not fully comfortable with him because, you know, She's gonna have to continue to be a bit standoffish. She's gonna have to give him a bit of a hard time because he did choose somebody else. Back to Kwame. Now, I will say this again, not knowing what the wedding outcomes are as of filming this, we'll know, you know, by the time this video goes live. But this is around the time that I kind of officially said that I think that Kwame is gonna say no. You could shock me, Kwame, you may, but um, I always felt that he would say no if he got to this point, but I was becoming more and more resolute in that um, the closer we get because this is around the time Kwame starts bemoaning having to move from where he's from. He's actually in Portland right now to Seattle after marriage, which is interesting. That's a new issue because if I'm, if I understand correctly, the previous seasons were all in one city. I think Micah's in Phoenix. Like what the hell is she doing there? <laughs> but, but yeah, they, uh, he's in Portland. And he's like, I don't wanna move to Seattle, essentially. I have home here. This is where I have a routine. I play soccer here five times a week. I go running. I have all my friends here. This is me, this is home. But it just doesn't make sense to stay in Portland if you're gonna get married to Chelsea because all her family's in Seattle and she doesn't have a remote job. She has to go into work and he, he has a remote job. He can kind of do his job wherever. And if I recall correctly, he doesn't have any family in Portland. So it, it's very much so just like a logistic thing. Like, yeah, it's something that you probably should have considered when you were coming to Seattle to meet a person. But to me, this is just to me, it felt like you went on this show knowing that you would have to do that if you met somebody that lives in Seattle. And I feel like he's just making up an excuse because he don't wanna marry her that bad. Which that's not to say that Chelsea is a bad person. I, I haven't found anything about Chelsea that's like super problematic by any means. She seems like a very expressive and loving. She's a little loud, <laughs> which I could see being a bit a uh, grating, but she seems like a very genuine person. Okay, back to Marshall and Jackie. Um, she'll be meeting his siblings at this point, his siblings and his niece. Um, and she just kind of talks about how she's just vaguely stressed out. Like she's stressed out 
and her family is not supporting her and her decision to get married this quickly. And they're not supportive of like doing anything in regards to marrying Marshall. And she's like, I need to be prepared for the consequences, depending on what I end up saying at that at that altar, I need to be prepared one way or the other with the, just, with the consequences of what I say. And that's just weighing on me really bad right now. And Marshall is very, he's very patient with it, super accommodating. He's like, do you need some space? I can take my family around a bit to give you some space to cool down. I want you to be in your, you know, your best head space. You know, I want you to feel comfortable. And she's just like, whatever, just bring them, just bring them. Like, it's fine. Let's just, let's just get this over with. And I'm like, here she go, here she go. Here she go, she going. So in comes the family, they're super sweet and welcoming to her. I really like the sister's hair. They do the whole like, what attracted you to Marshall? What attracted you to Jackie, blah, blah, blah. And when Jackie talks about Marshall, in my opinion, it came off like, yeah, he's a great therapist. <laughs> That's how I read it. It's like, yeah, you're really forcing me to like introspect and grow up. You know, he's forcing me to be a little bit more grown and like, like that's not his job. His job isn't to make you more grown. That's your job, get a f therapist. But when they end it, the siblings are like, oh, he just seems so happy and so light and, and like just his aura. He's so in love. This is so nice. Kwame calls his mom about the wedding and she is not happy about it and will not be coming to the wedding. She's very direct about it. She's like, no. This is something that really rocks him and gives him yet another reason. <laughs> for this dude to undoubtedly not marry her. I don't think he was gonna do it anyway, but he's just getting more and more reason not to, in my opinion, which really sucks because it's such a contrast between like how Chelsea talks about Kwame versus how Kwame talks. Like he'll talk about loving Chelsea, but he's more, at least according to the edit, more focused on like the situation. He's like, oh, this is, I gotta, I gotta give up all this shit and my mama don't wanna do it and blah, 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 blah. And like occasionally he'll be like, I love Chelsea, but like, it's always like a butt like, and it's like, oh, I gotta give up all this stuff. And it's such a contrast with how like Chelsea talks about him because she talks about this man, like he farts glitter and shits rainbows. We're in a fairy tale love. I never felt that love would be like this for me. And I'm, I'm finally in this place. I never thought this feeling would happen for me. Now he may be amazing off camera, but what we see, what we see, is someone who's incredibly non-committal to you. Honestly, for her sake, I hope he says no because she can do better. And I know she really wants to get married. That's the vibe I get from her. Like she just really wants to get married and she loves him. So it's like, why not? But I'm like, babe, no. Okay, so this episode ends with Zach and Bliss on a date on a boat. And <laughs> he tries to lay down this incredibly painfully awkward, again, that's how we should just assume everything's done with Zach, but he lays down this incredibly awkward game and he's like, who is someone you'd like to meet? And she's like, I, I think I'd like to meet Oprah. She's a very powerful woman. And he reaches into his coat pocket and he says, I would like to meet your parents. I know. Ain't that crazy? It's insane. Yeah. I know. This mother gets down on his knee. And, mm -hmm. and he's like, will you marry me? Don't you ever bring no man home like that. Episode eight. She accepts. I know. I know. I too was left speechless. I was truly shocked. Honestly, I honestly, one didn't expect him to do that. And I sure as hell didn't expect her to accept it. At the same time, I do feel like they are awkward uh, match made in heaven. I will say that one of my general rules of thumb is to never be a man's second choice. Absolutely not. But I will say he's weird, she's weird. So maybe it's a match, who the fuck, what the hell do I know? Paul meets Micah's parents. Her dad is a dork. They seem nice. They seem on board as much as you can be in the circumstances. Okay, so Marshall and Jackie, not looking good. Marshall left the townhouse after having an argument with her in which she essentially said that he wasn't man enough. Um, well, that's how he tells it. We don't see this argument so when I heard it, like both of their sides, I was very confused because I couldn't tell if the issue was that she was downplaying his masculinity in general. The way she said it is like, you need to boss up and be more aggressive and blah, blah. And I was sitting there like, do you mean like sexually? I'm like, you left because she wanna get choked? 
I mean, just say no, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> the more it kind of unraveled, it became more of a, she sh she was kind of talking about him as a person. You're too sensitive. You're not, you're not masculine enough. You need to boss up. You need to be more aggressive. And I could definitely see how that would be very hurtful to him, considering he's been denigrated for being an emotional man, you know? A lot of people would take that as him being perceived as soft and not masculine. And the more this argument started to take off, I was sitting there so confused because I'm like, Jackie, you fell in love with a man who was writing poetry in the pods. If you wanted a traditionally masculine man, you wanted an alpha male man. Why you pick the mother that was making sonnets? <laughs> like you had a guy that was doing the whole like showboating, you know, I'm this, I'm that dude, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You had that dude, but you picked the that was writing limericks. You must have understood on some capacity or another that this man is unlike the type of dudes that you were very attracted to at one point and that resulted in you picking him, no? So I'm sitting here like, why are you upset that the man that you picked who is specifically sensitive and emotional, you're upset that he doesn't do the things that the quote unquote dominant dudes do. Like, duh, why are you surprised that he's not that person? And again, going back to that kind of personality trait that I was picking up on pretty early, which is like someone who has never felt love, has never felt peace really. I wouldn't be surprised if that type of person would at some point sabotage this because this is of course, all speculation, I don't know her, but I got the sense that her relationship with her parents was probably very tumultuous and that led to tumultuous relationships romantically. And now she kind of associates, you know, chaos, trauma, abuse with normality. Um, and that anything less than that is just boring. And I was just sitting there like, damn, I, I saw the self-sabotage coming, but I guess I didn't expect it one to come this quickly. The whole time they're like arguing, I'm sitting there like, man, your self-sabotage is really kicking your ass and it's making you an asshole. Like you, you being an asshole. And during the argument to me, it comes off like he's trying to reach a resolution and it's getting frustrating between the two because she's like, I don't know what you want because she's never had to functionally communicate and reach a resolution. So she doesn't know how to do that shit. And they're just getting frustrated at each other. And they just bring out the worst in each other. Speaking of which, Marshall ends up saying some truly gross shit. Because I see you as a project and I saw potential. Uh, uh, uh. If you have not been in a, a real relationship before, you also say that you're not emotionally available at times. If you recall in the last time we talked about Love is Blind, I kind of said that I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Marshall um, for no specific reason. And I couldn't put my finger on why, cause on, you know, I guess superficially, he's not doing anything other than being like the emotional guy. I, I just couldn't put my finger on what it is that was off putting. And I think this line in a way so concise surmised this kind of inexplicable feeling I had about Marshall. He gives me, I am specifically interested in women who have never had functional relationships in any, in any sense that have never felt functional displays of love because it allows me the opportunity to love them into healing and thus proves my worth and my utility. Now, by his own omission, he has been undermined his entire life for being very emotional, being too sensitive. And how I started to read it is that in a weird way, he has made this into, you know, his utility, into his strength, right? Let me prove my worth by fixing people who aren't sensitive, who who have trouble with their emotions because I'm so in tune with mine. As a person who has had traits like this, I, I, I guess maybe that's it. I recognized it in him because I've done a level of this a lot as well. My job is to teach people, teach me how to love. And that shit is incredibly gross and dehumanizing. She's not a project. She's a hurting person. Even if you consider her someone who needs assistance, it would not be from you, a random non-professional. She's a person that needs a lot of therapy, it seems like a lot. <laughs> it's it's just silly. It's just not how that works. 
to look at it more charitably, it's like a very, I guess, beautiful idea. Like, yeah, love can heal everything. And and I'm not here to say that a healthy relationship couldn't couldn't assist in repairing some people's associations with relationships of all capacities. It could help like show that not every relationship is so tumultuous and so negative. To essentially be attracted to people as projects is really gross. <laughs> And I guess all I'm gonna say is that both of y'all need so much therapy. Of course, Jackie more so because she seems to have been set up for failure. I'm like, both of y'all need to go to therapy, whether you stay together or don't. Y'all, y'all need to work on, the last thing y'all need to be doing is marrying each other. Like, come on. But by the end of the argument, they hug it out. She apologizes and they seem to be on semi good terms, but it's not gonna last, bitch. I'm, I hate to break it to you. Anyway, Zach and Bliss are moving into that townhouse again because they're engaged now apparently uh yes why did you bring me my socks you want attention you mad that mommy's working mad that mommy's working <laughs> okay say so zach and bliss move into the production townhouse again because they're engaged now and it comes up the thing that i was talking about before which is her feelings around being the second person that he chose. You know, you you wanted someone else at one point. He's like, you aren't the second choice because the only way you would be the second choice is if I wanted somebody else, but I don't want anybody else, I want you. But she's still like kind of apprehensive about that. And again, I don't know how to feel about their connection or the fact that they're engaged. I don't know, I feel like y'all could have just dated, but there's something to be said about like rushing into another engagement that I find off-putting because if y'all just dated off camera, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, back to Kwame and Chelsea, they discuss kids and he doesn't seem ready to have them anytime soon. And she's kind of looking to do it within the next two to three years. And again, that man does not want to get married. Like <laughs> obviously wanting them. She's in her early thirties. So that's very reasonable. If you want kids and you're with a partner, like you'd be interested in kind of, you know, nailing down a time pretty soon. But honestly, he doesn't seem like he wants to settle down. I don't understand why you're getting married at all. He's like, I wanna be able to travel. I wanna be able to do this. I wanna be able to do that and da da da, da. And he's just talking about all the things that he won't be able to do when he gets married. Um, Paul meets Micah's friends. Um, and the energy is not great as far as like between Paul and the friends. One of her friends seems to be very apprehensive about the entire thing, downright hostile a little bit. And Paul is like, well, I'm not gonna take her opinion too seriously because like, why would I? And Micah is like, no, you have to. It's like literally the worst attitude to have. If you don't care about like what she says, that's like a major issue. No, I 100% do, but I'm not gonna take it personally. So Paul walks off for a second, not like angrily, but he's just away for a second. And then the friend starts crying and going on about like, you deserve a fairy tale and he, and this is not it. Like he's nice or whatever, but this is not it. So finally, the last uh, big event of this episode is actually Chelsea's birthday party in which they invite many of the cast members back to the, to the establishment. Basically everybody except Arena. Amber's there, the other girl that Paul liked in the pods. He makes the very smart decision to avoid her. He's like, nope, not doing that, which is the way you should do that. Josh, the other guy that Jackie was interested in, he comes as well. And in prior episodes, we don't see Josh a whole lot. He's in a clip here or there. What little energy I got from him is he seems very annoying and obnoxious, but that's about it. He wasn't on screen much. But during this particular event, you can feel the vibe. Bad, horrible f boy energy, weird, like. <laughs> but more on that later. Because Marshall comes in to the event without Jackie and everyone notices because like everyone's coming in with their significant other, you know, like what's going on. And he's like, I don't know where we stand right now. So then Jackie comes in and the energy is very off, obviously. Josh is there talking to Paul about how he's ready to tell Jackie just how he feels because the only reason why I didn't tell her how I felt is because I was thinking of Marshall's feelings and I kind of put his feelings before mine and that's the reason why we didn't end up together. What? That's not, that's not true. <laughs> 
We saw, we saw the show. You gave Jackie the ultimatum that if she didn't pick you, you were gonna pack your shit and leave. Pretty indicative of you saying how you felt. And then she basically said, uh, well, I'ma still pick another person. And she chose someone else, you weirdo. That's not what happened. But Josh gives very toxic, oh, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a stir the pot energy. <laughs> so he goes up to Jackie while she's talking to some of the other ladies. <laughs> and the energy's very off. So I'm sitting there like, oh God. Meanwhile, Kwame and Micah talk again, because of course they do. And at first, I was like pleasantly surprised with how this interaction was going. It seemed like they had finally gotten past whatever feelings that they had for each other and, and things were more appropriate with them talking to each other. Also, I figured that at his literal fiance's birthday party, they wouldn't do a whole how much they feel for each other thing, blah, blah, blah. But alas, he asked her, if she thinks she made the right choice and she makes that dopey ass face that she got and she's like, I'm unsure, but I'm hopeful. Then she's like, not to turn this around on you, but like, why do you ask that? She's like, are you questioning or anything? And he just laughs and says in the after interview that, you know, Micah has and always will have a place in his heart. And I'm just like, I don't know if that's an editing thing that made that look even worse, but it's bad. I think it's pretty objectively bad. I don't know. But she does the whole like, I still care about you. Like, I think about you. We have so much potential. That bitch is a f***ing weirdo. She really gets off on how Kwame is like obsessed with her. That's how I read it. So like whenever she sees him, she's like, I wanna seize the opportunity to get that like shot of validation. I love that I'm the person that you're so still hooked on even though you have a fiance. That's the vibe I get from her. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, speaking of weirdos, Josh goes up to Marshall. He has this very like drunken, indistinguishable conversation. Damn near rant about where he's like, let's not let this change us. He starts calling himself Mr. Steal Your Girl. You know, Marshall's rightfully uncomfortable and he's like, well, if you can steal it from me, you can have it. <laughs> but like the energy is very weird and very off. And everybody at the place picks up on it. But Jackie, like the girls are talking to her like on the side while he's like ranting at Marshall. And they're like, I don't, I don't think he has a good character. He's very showboating. And also he just comes off as just not good vibes. He's not cool. He's not a good person. Nobody likes Josh is the vibe I got. Even the men don't like him. The women don't like, nobody likes Josh. <laughs> Fuck. Jackie had a vibe with him at one point. So Josh goes up to her and he's just way too close. He start being all up in her face doing this. Like he's a stereotype of boy. He do like this. He calls Marshall NBA cry boy. And she laughs at that. And then he starts doing this whole like, you know, Marshall wasn't being real cause I was being real. Like he was crying with you. He was crying with everybody. I didn't think you of all people would fall for that. Which as far as we saw is a lie. <laughs> that is not what happened. As far as we saw, Marshall was very like focused on Jackie. He's like, I love this girl and I'm focusing on her. But they're talking and the other cast members like Bliss and Zach are like, this seems bad. This doesn't look good. This is not looking good. And they're like, well, we can't choose decisions for them. But like, you know, it's not looking good. Again, he starts to talk about how he put Marshall's feelings over his own as if that's the reason why they weren't together. And it's like, it's not the reason why y'all aren't together. We saw why y'all not together. She knew that you gave her an ultimatum and that you were gonna go home if she didn't choose you and she didn't choose your ass. That's why you went home. That's so crazy that you're saying all this to me because I feel like we never talked about emotions in the pod. Oh, oh, we did? We had a connection, but you never was like super deep with me, super open. He's like beyond the lights and cameras, like what we had was real. Any mother that brings up the lights and cameras cares too much about the lights and cameras. Essentially, this all boils down to him going straight up to her like, hey, if you want to marry him, then fuck me. Cause fuck me, what you care about me for? Fuck my feelings. But if any part of you's doubting it, you should pick me. He a literal pick me. Well, I'll be down. Episode nine. Uh, begins at the end of Chelsea's party with Marshall and Jackie going back to the townhouse and Marshall in a last ditch effort to try to like figure out what 
Jackie's needs and desires are so that they can go forward in their relationship. He goes to Jack and he's like, I saw how you were interacting with people and it and it makes me have a question about you. And you know, I, I just want us to reach a understanding about what you need from me, what your needs and desires are so that we can be on good footing. And then she starts going like, oh my God, I can't do this. It's so late. I don't want to talk about no needs and expectations. I don't want to have no conversation. Let's just do this tomorrow. Let's just do this tomorrow. And he's like, okay, if that's, if that's what you want to do. But he's like, obviously uncomfortable about it. He's like, I just, I just feel really not great about where we are right now. I don't know where we stand. And she starts like deflecting, saying how pretty his eyes are. We don't ever get to reach a resolution because you say, for instance, we wait till tomorrow, you up and out the door going to work before we can even discuss things. So like, we can't talk about it. So we keep not talking about things. And she was like, well, yeah, when I leave, I'll always come back. That kind of word choice really tells me about like where her baseline understanding of like what a relationship is, what stability is. Yeah, I treat you like shit, but I come home. Is that an accomplishment? <laughs> like, girl, what? Just leave everybody alone. You are not ready to be in a relationship with anyone. You're not ready to be in an adult conversation, it feels like. Like, what the hell are you talking about? And it's like the sheer fact that all he wants to do is reach a resolution with you and have conversation. And that's like exasperating for you. She's just very immature and stunted. And it's, it, and she's hurting people because of that, because she either doesn't know it's her responsibility to take on the healing for that, or she doesn't know how, or I don't know, but something's just very off. But at the end of that, all she says, like, the only thing I need you to do is to love me, which is ill anyway, but it's doubly ill when you know that she's never said, I love you to Marshall. She's like, I f with you tough. Ugh. Anyway, Kwame, again, Kwame's just finding more reasons for that barrier. Now the issue is that she can be a little snippy in the morning. She's kind of confrontational. I was like, are you okay? And she was like, do I sound okay? She's kind of snippy. You know, she's around all the time. And she's kind of suffocating. Again, in addition to like, he doesn't want to move and doesn't want to make new friends. You know, again, it's just him going on and on. And we see them shopping and it's very awkward to behold as a third party because she's obviously trying to like coax affection out of him. Again, she's all into him. She acting like this ball sack is her favorite scent. And he's just kind of passive about her for most of the time that she's she's on camera like it it gives very much so like he's just going through the motions and it's very gross in fairness he does like bring up to her the like issue of confrontational mornings or or moments with her there was a little like back and forth at first but then she's pretty good at acknowledging that she's been dealing with stress and she's gonna work on that bliss meets zach's family they seem nice accepting cool um, and then Zach meets her mom and sisters and they seem like a group of gems, just wonderful women. Like they seem to be like very nurturing and supportive and intelligent, really cool people. For some reason, he feels the need to go into the entire story about how he had proposed to somebody else and then that didn't work out and now he's proposing to Bliss and blah, blah, blah. And it's awkward. Um, but th again, they're just like super warm people. And regardless of like what had happened that led to this, they seem to be very welcoming to him. Tiffany meets Brett's friends and his friends seem really cool, really supportive. I love seeing like a group of black men supporting each other like this. It's just so beautiful. Um, they seem to be very emotionally intelligent and like really cool people. Chelsea's family meets Kwame and they seem like a room full of very energetic wine moms. Love it. So now it's time for the least interesting part of the season, which is the dress and suit fittings. Honestly, I could not care less. I would prefer to just see you in the dress on the day. Um, but the reason why I'm bringing it up this season is that it becomes somewhat of an epicenter to foolishness because Jackie doesn't come to the fitting. And apparently not only did she not come to the fitting, but she has not told Marshall because he's getting his suit. He finds out about her not going to the fitting because Tiffany texts Brett and Brett tells Marshall like she didn't come to the fitting. He's like, okay, that is up. That's so up. Ugh, this is not of God. 
She should be ashamed of herself. This is ugly. Okay, you don't have to be with anybody. Ain't nobody gonna make you be with anybody. But the least you could have did is told that man you not going to the fit in. It's very ugly, ugly, ugly. But rest assured, it will get more fucked up because not only is she not at the dress fitting, the reason she isn't there, according to editing, maybe this isn't true, but according to editing, she went to meet up with Josh's corny ass at a cafe. Bitch, bitch. Imagine being stupid enough to cheat on camera. And then the episode ends. <laughs> episode 10. We're still at the coffee shop with Josh and, and uh, what is her name? Jackie's uh, trifling ass. He's like, oh, I want to be with you, yada, yada, yada. And sh she is like mad inappropriate at this. She's like, yeah, I heard your voice at the party and my nipples like harden up. And I was like, oh my God, it's Josh. And he's like, I want to be together. And she like, okay. Cause honestly, Marshall's too sensitive for me. When I told him to boss up, he left for three days and I don't care how he feels about us getting together. You know, I'm over it. I chose wrong with him. Like very callous and inconsiderate. Again, not at all acknowledging the part that you played in that. And again, again, the thing that's really confusing to me is like, what did you expect? Marshall was never aggressive. That He was never that guy. And if that was gonna be like a crucial, like a cornerstone of what you find attractive, which is why you keep ending up in really toxic relationships, I bet. Why would you go with this dude who you knew for being like creative and poetic and, and, feminine quote unquote you know in the way that you're thinking of it in like a in a disparaging way toxic masculinity aside he was never that person why did you pick marshall then you had a person who was all that negativity that you wanted and you didn't pick him anyway josh says do you see yourself marrying me she <laughs> another thing that's like why are you here because she's like you know I could see that happening, but like the legal part of marriage scares me. I'm not gonna lie to you. So if you're trying to get married anytime soon, I can't do that for you. Why the fuck are you on Love is Blind then? And the thing is, the thing that gets me is that people come on reality shows, shows the worst sides of themselves on reality TV. Just for what? I, I highly doubt you making any money. I highly doubt you getting much from this. Now you just got a whole audience of possibly millions of people that know that you ain't shit. Who gonna laugh at you when that relationship goes downhill because odds are it will because he's giving selfish, toxic masculinity, but okay. And now you've got nothing but negatives on a show that you never wanted the only prize that they offering you, which is a happy marriage. You ain't even want that. You didn't want to get married. What the f are you here for? But yeah, they kiss, stay together now. Nasty, gross, gross bitch behavior. This reunion gonna be crazy. So back at the townhouse, Marshall comes in to confront Jackie after learning that she's not at the fitting. And he's like, why did you accept my proposal? And she was like, well, what I felt for you was real in them pods. Like when I felt for you was real. And, um, but at the end of the day, you require a lot of validation and you require a lot of emotional things. And I can't do that. Like I can't, I'm not sufficing. And then I'm like trying to force myself to have that when you know, you know, feeling, and I don't have it with you at all. And I'm attracted to Josh. I just saw him and I want it. I want to end it with you. Not that I should be at all surprised from Jackie as a person who is self-admittedly emotionally stunted, but it's very cold and crass. And she's just like, whatever, you know, like it's over. And it's just really wild to hear. I don't want to be with you anymore. And you want to be with Josh? I will find that out. Again, we weren't there for the whole thing. And maybe, I don't know if this is because of editing, but at least what we saw, it's very fascinating to see a person see what we've seen and reach the conclusion, like digest that information and reach the conclusion that Marshall is being unreasonable with how he's like saying like, hey, I just wanna communicate expectations and desires so nobody's getting their needs left unmet. And she's like, oh my God, you're just pressing on me, insinuating that he's just so needy and he needs to be, have all this validation. And it's just like, what are you talking about? Anyway, Marshall handles this way better than I would've. <laughs> Again, I think that's that's indicative of his character. He's like, that's incredibly hurtful. I want I want my ring back because I don't think that you should have ever accepted my proposal. And then this bitch is like, well, I'm going to keep the ring 
<laughs> because I accepted the proposal because I wanted to marry you. Very broke behavior. I assume that the ring isn't paid for by the groom. I assume it's paid for by Love is Blind or the production or whatever, but um, fascinating. Okay. He's like, whatever, keep it. I don't care. But I hope that every time you look at it, it's a reminder of what you gave up. And I hope so too, bitch. I hope you wake up one day and be like, oh, wow, I'm the problem. She was like, okay, see you around. And he's like, no. And she's like, okay, whatever. And kind of scoffs when he leaves off. Again, like he's the crazy one. In the post interview, she's like, I'm not even sorry I can't be with him. I just can't be with him. I don't know if I'm gonna be with Josh. I'm crazy. Maybe I shouldn't be with anybody, honestly. Maybe I should do some self work. Ding, 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 bitch. Ding, ding, ding. Because, bitch, go to therapy. You, please, you, you need to stay in therapy for at least the next five plus years. I would argue much longer than that. Maybe in like a year or so into therapy, you start dating again. But baby, keep going, keep going, because something's very wrong. Marshall too, again, you seem to be attracted specifically to people that give you the opportunity to prove your worth as a caretaker. Please go to therapy, that is not your only utility, and you deserve to have people that reciprocate you. It is not your job to fix every relationship, it's your job to be met where you're at, babe. Kwame and Chelsea, have an incredibly intimate photo shoot that we didn't need to be there for. But afterwards, they come up again with the issue that his mom may not be coming to, well, she isn't coming to the wedding. And he goes into how, you know, his parents at one point had a very, very big say in his dating life. They may think that he's still a virgin even. He plans to reach out and try to get her approval again. And Chelsea says to him like, are you ready? Like, even if we don't get her approval, like, are you ready? And he's like, I know that I love you a lot. And I don't know if this is editing or whatever, but he never explicitly answers the question, like if your mom doesn't approve, would you still say yes? And I'm like, God, please stop drawing this out. We know he's not gonna say yes. Tiffany and Brett. So Tiffany is getting really stressed out about the wedding preparations. I'd imagine it'd be really hard to like get your bearings because they still go to work and stuff and they still have to do this filming shit and go to work and, blah, blah, blah. and Brett's there to soothe her with his sexy ass. That, but basically they do all this to kind of like insinuate that um, there might be some doubt between even the best and most solid couple, Brett and Tiffany. I don't care what they say, they're still going to get married. I highly doubt it. I'd be very surprised. Again, watch this, this goes up the day after they do the weddings and they'll be like, girl, they didn't even get married. I would be truly shocked. Micah and Paul get their rings made personally. Like they go in to get their rings made. And I think that's a very good idea if I'm ever to devote my life to a man, ugh, um, I'll consider it. I'm gonna steal that. I want that idea. And this episode ends with Zach meeting Bliss's dad and stepmom. And the dad is very skeptical about everything, um, but in a way that doesn't feel at all helpful and honestly a bit demeaning and annoying. Um, but I mean, he has every right to feel skeptical about everything going on, but like he, he does it in a way that's very overpowering that I'm not a fan of. And then outside of that, Zach and the dad don't seem to really have much in common. So there's no like innate warmth between them either. So it's just very awkward. All right, and finally episode 11. It's two days before the wedding and Chelsea and Kwame are discussing the mom thing again. Um, Apparently off camera, he had said something along the lines of like how important his mom is and that he wouldn't want, you know, Chelsea to take his last name without her being on board. And she was like, I was so like, ready to marry you. And then you said that, and I'm sitting here like, oh my God, she may not be on board. Why, why is her say so strong? Like I value your family and your traditions and all that. Again, I feel like this is just a, one of the many scapegoats that he's making for why he, does, he doesn't want to get married. But yeah, she's starting to feel unsure. She's like, because your mom who refuses to meet me, refuses to talk to me, has these very strong feelings. It's almost like she's deciding for them. Chelsea's very understanding and very kind in in this whole interaction while she's like expressing her concerns. She's not overbearing by any means. She's just very like, this is, this is a very looming concern for me. 
And also, Kwame, you kind of talk about our first year of marriage as if it's going to be this incredibly arduous and, and tumultuous time. And it, it really concerns me because that's not how I see our marriage, like the first year getting married. Like I see, yeah, there'll be hard times, but I see it as this beautiful and joyful union because I love you so much. And I'm so excited for the life that we're building together. But you see it as like some big awful thing <laughs> and it's because he don't want to get married i don't think in general tiffany meets brett's dad and brother they are so cute the dad reminds me of my family like particularly my mom's side of the family uh old black people in michigan have like a very thick southern accent for those of you that don't know a lot of black people from the south came up for the auto industry. It seems so warm and welcoming. I liked him. Okay, they have the obligatory bachelor, bachelorette parties. Um, again, Kwame's there talking to his friends about, you know, all the things he has to give up to get married. And I'm like, please stop dragging this out. Oh my God. But his friend basically says to him, like, if you say no to that girl, you crazy. <laughs> she love you. Speaking of which, we have reached the final stretch. Time for our first wedding, everybody. Chelsea and Kwame. <laughs> Again, going into this wedding, I don't, I have no inkling at all that this man would say yes, none. So it's incredibly bittersweet, the absolute pure joy on Chelsea's face as she's like, oh my God, those are my flowers and this is my dress and all my family's here. And it's just like, and I'm marrying the man of my dreams. Oh, she loves this man. Chelsea and his sister, his sister and his brother are down for the wedding, so they come. Um, and the sister and her have this beautiful moment where she gives her a gift. She's like, thank you for your part of turning Kwame into the man that he is. And they start crying and shit. And again, he gonna say no. So I'm hurting. I'm sad. I'm like, damn, this is sad because imagine wasting this beautiful ash train on this dress for a man that's gonna say no. Again, we don't know that. Well, I don't as a filming. He's gonna say no. Like the whole time he looks unhappy. <laughs> he just looks scared he doesn't look joyful he doesn't like he looks like he don't want to be there and she gives her vows and he and she's just so like oh, oh, oh and he gives his vows which are quote unquote improvised they didn't feel improvised at all they felt like a memorized presentation and if it wasn't memorized that kind of goes to his general demeanor feels very like any like high pressure situation feels like he's doing a business presentation when they argue it feels like he's doing that and that maybe that's what i'm reading that feeds off of that just disingenuousness that I feel from him. But the episode ends with Chelsea saying, I do. I was not shocked by that because again, she's over here sniffing his farts leading up to the <laughs> altar. So I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. And Kwame, we don't know because the episode ends. You knew that was gonna happen. You knew they wasn't gonna let us not have a cliffhanger. Come on. So yeah, that's episode six through 11 of Love is Blind. I'm just gonna come back next week and we're gonna do the finale, which is when we figure out everyone who's gonna be married. Again, I'm filming this before the finale, but it'll be posted afterwards. But these are my predictions, okay? Chelsea's gonna say yes, cause we already know that. And Kwame's gonna say no. Tiffany and Brett will both say yes. I think Zach and Bliss will say yes. If anyone says no, it'll be, it'll probably be Bliss. Paul will say yes and Micah will say no. But yes, I'll be back next week to talk about the actual weddings as well as the live, again, live reunion. I don't think I've ever seen Netflix do a live broadcast of anything. So especially with a season that's been as messy as this, I wonder who's all gonna come. Would Irina come? Would Josh? I mean, I saw Jackie in the promo, so she might be there. I don't know. This is gonna be ghetto. I'm so excited. <laughs> But yeah, I'll talk about the weddings and the reunion in the next video. So anyway, if you like this video, feel free to like this video. Follow me on all my social media, Instagram and Twitter, both of which are Kenny JD. You wanna say bye, Bubba? She's tired. She After she's been annoying me the entire time we've been filming now, she's tired. You wanna say goodbye, Bubba? That's you. Say bye. Poke your nose on the... Yes. Bye, guys.